Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and welcome to the wacky world of the comic book vault. Today we're going to take a look at something odd that just happened to be lying around in my collection. Today we're going to look at uh, Roger Rabbit's Toontown number one. Uh, I just did a Rewind United review last week on uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit and thought uh, what appropriate time, probably there will never be a more appropriate time, uh, for me to uh, take a look at uh, this issue. And this is the only issue of this I happen to have. So um, I thought uh, I thought I'd show it to you. And uh, this is a collection of three stories that take place just in Toontown. In fact, uh, I don't know why you would look at this without having watched the film, but if you happen to do that and, and you didn't see the movie, you would have no idea that human beings even exist in this world. Uh, it's simply um, a cartoon town where cartoons do silly, toony things, and it seems to be an exercise in trying to be as wacky and over-the-top and nonsensical as humanly possible, and uh, succeeds at that, at, uh, for the most part, at least in the first story. Um, I think the first story is kind of funny. Uh, the other two didn't really do anything for me. This reminded me, actually, uh, quite a bit, and, and was published around the same time, really, as the uh, Ghostbusters Slimer trade that I reviewed a few months back. Um, I forget what that was called now, um, but uh, yeah, it, it was this. this uh, it, it was kind of the same thing. It was like you take one really cartoony aspect of something. Uh, in this case, of course, this was about cartoons, but with, with Ghostbusters, it just took Slimer and made this like really kid-friendly comic book. And like the Ghostbusters were around, but it was pretty much just this really, really silly, nonsensical Slimer story uh, uh, set of stories that had nothing to do with. Um, Really the Ghostbusters, except peripherally. Uh, this is the same sort of thing, and one of the things that really works against it is that it's so extremely kid-friendly. It's, it's taking Roger Rabbit and trying to make it even more kid-friendly. So in the middle, there's a story about Baby Herman, but he doesn't really feel much like the, the Baby Herman from the movie, except that he's an adult in a baby's body, but of course he doesn't have a stogie, he's not hitting on women, all the stuff that made that character funny are taken out so that uh, it's, it's uh, kid-friendly and, and PC enough. And and so uh, that, that kind of hurts. The other thing that really hurts it is that uh, there are no uh, there are no trademark cartoons that uh, are from like you know Disney or Warner's or anything like that. And you wouldn't expect that. Uh, you wouldn't expect to see Warner's characters in this necessarily. But uh, it's published by just uh, Walt Disney Studios. Actually, Walt Disney published them th this themselves and didn't go with another comic book company. And so I would have liked to have seen at least some of their characters show up in this because a lot of what made Roger Rabbit works so well, as I said in my in my review of the film, is that those characters existed, you know, you know, those really familiar characters that we knew from uh, from watching cartoons when we were all kids uh, that came out of the 40s, uh, the, you know, 30s and 40s and 50s um, were, were actually, you know, around in this world. And uh, this is kind of the generic set of characters that I think would have really hurt that movie. And uh, th that's that's here. So uh, the, the book opens up, and like I said, this first story is the best of the three, and um, is just really, really silly and out there and um, honestly isn't a story so much as just a bunch of random silly things that happen. Uh, I, I was flabbergasted just looking at the first page where it says Roger Rabbit in a, in a story called, 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 well, you name it. I've never seen that before. Um, a story that's so outlandish you can't even decide what it should be called. Um, if I had to name this story, I would call it I laughed, I cried, I spilled milk on my bad pants. Uh, because this is about um, a, a pair of pants that owns a crime syndicate. Uh, that's right, folks. A pair of pants with a face that owns a crime syndicate that uh, is being um, attacked by pizzas after it wants to steal Roger Rabbit's pants. That's, that's the story. That's what it's about. Um, it's on a quest to be less lonely because it can't find a sentient pair of pants and it's stealing everyone's pants trying to find one that is, um, that is actually a living pair of pants. Um, I thought it was funny. Uh, it's also totally, totally bizarre and out there. Uh, one of the things that, that, uh, that this does is it does try to pull some of the ideas from Toontown from the movie. Um, it really doesn't feel much like the film. Roger Rabbit doesn't really talk that much like Roger Rabbit, and he's kind of the straight man of the story, which is sort of bizarre. Uh, he seems surprised by, uh, by the way, by all of the really literal humor, which he was a part of in the movie, so he, you know, you should expect that. That's what, that's, that's what Toontown does. And uh, it was actually, there's actually even more more literal humor in this than I would have expected. Um, stuff like Jessica Rabbit runs off at the beginning to go shopping, and she's going to a department store, and Roger Rabbit says, what are you going to get at the department store? And she says, departments, of course. Well, that's funny, but if in Toontown department stores sell departments, 
whatever that means, because she comes back with little boxes, so I have no idea what exactly departments are supposed to be and what she bought, but wouldn't Roger Rabbit know that that's what you get at a department store? And uh, then the story just kind of abruptly ends. Uh, you get to the end of it, and there's these pizzas attacking, and uh, Roger Rabbit is actually in the, uh, the crime syndicate pants, and uh, helping the crime syndicate pants run away, and there's a couple of fun gags, like uh, this panel that says, uh, tilt page, please, and then you have to tilt it so that you can see the skyscraper um, uh, vertically. I think that's really funny. And there's another part where he says, uh, yay, we're safe, and then a safe drops. I mean, you know, it's, it's really old school um, uh, cartoon humor, and it has a good sense of that, but then at the end of it, it just suddenly abrupts. Uh, uh, she comes back, Jess comes, comes back, and then uh, Rod Rabbit says, I'll explain later. The end, and then a couple of uh, much inferior and uh, not nearly as funny stories happen. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that one in depth because I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, but then after that, you got uh, th this thing called Baby Herman in Shopping Spree, where Baby Herman goes to um, the grocery store, and um, I think it would be funny if he also went to the department stores so that we could see what that was like. Um, but these were written by different people who probably weren't communicating with each other, and uh, they, they, they have these uh, kind of obvious kinds of gags that aren't, like I said, nearly as funny as the first one. Like, you know, he, he falls in, in pickles and says that he's going to smell like a deli for a, week, for a week and all these things. And um, he, uh, his, his big thing is that he's upset that people are constantly treating him like a baby. There is one line that he, that, that he has that I kind of like where he's like, why do people always assume that movie stars are the people they play in the movies? Uh, and, I, and I like that that's his thing, not just why do people assume that I'm a baby because I look like a baby. Uh, but then at the end, uh, he's upset because they always give him a, a sucker every time he goes to the store. And then he uh, bashes a uh, a parking meter, a sentient parking meter over the head with a sucker at the end. And, and uh, because the meter uh, charges him three bucks for parking in the wrong place, uh, for parking his buggy in the wrong place. But the meter wasn't there in the first place. And then he smashes it over the head with it. And uh, I guess that's the closest to the baby Herman that we saw in the movie. And um, then he says, oh, yay, now I have something I can do with these. So, I don't know, it's more of a story than the first one, but... It's not nearly as clever. And then the last one is just, dare I say, kind of dumb. It's called uh, Jessica Rabbit in Beauty on the Spot, and she's supposed to be, like, the uh, toon version of, like, Miss America, but she wins it every year because she's the most beautiful toon, of course. And so um, then there's all these, like, like different kinds of female toons, all of which are, 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 like, are, like, vastly physically inferior to her, and, like, one's a little kid, and one's really ugly, and one's a super villain. Um, I actually like the super villain, though, because she's, she's called, like... What's her name? Was, she actually had the word villain in her name. Was, oh yeah, Villainessa. I thought that was funny. She looks like a cross between Cruella de Vil and Vampirella. And uh, that was that was kind of funny. I'd like to maybe see her actually have her own story somewhere or something in one of these. That that would be that would be amusing. Um, but then uh, you know, it's all these stereotypes of, of, of women that um, that society doesn't think are attractive enough to be in that kind of a that kind of a prestigious role. And then at the end, um, she can't pick anyone, so she finds out that there's no there's there's no rule about picking a man, so she picks Roger Rabbit. Um, it's 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 goofy. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's Roger Rabbit's Toontown number one. Um, there are actually uh, more Roger Rabbit comics than I would have expected, and I, I had no idea that that uh, that there were even Roger Rabbit comics, much less the number of them that there are. There is actually a graphic novel that came out in 89 that I would like to get my hands on um, called The Resurrection of Doom, where they actually bring back Judge Doom, and uh, Eddie Valiant is in it, and it actually uh, deals with the um, humans and the tunes again. And I'd like to get my hands on that, um, and maybe review that down the line. But anyway, thanks a lot for uh, watching The Comic Book Vault. Tomorrow I'm going to start a series on Deadpool, uh, a, a uh, one of our viewers and, I, and I'll be sure and mention his name next time. I don't have it uh, with me right now. Um, but one of our viewers sent me... Um uh, Deadpool Classics Volumes 1 through 5. So we're going to take a look at those this week. Uh, so we're going to do a series on Deadpool. And um, thanks as always for watching. If you ever want to send me anything to review, either something you want me to borrow or something you want to just uh, hand off to me, you can always send me stuff to the P.O. Box. That's Geek Volusion, P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas, 66285. I'm Captain Logan, and happy reading.